Welcome friends and neighbors to the next project. This is a 3D print project file release. You will be getting files to make different radius side arcs like this, different stretcher pieces like that, and also as time allows and requests come in, different router base or caddies as I call them for your compact router, the small format um, both cord and cordless routers. So this particular router base is what I'll call Universal One Glide Base. It will uh, accept up to, I think, six different routers um, as different hole patterns available. It basically sits right on the side arcs and slides back and forth. Fewer parts to find and put together and keep track of. You just print the base, print the sides. I do have this screwing together and you're ready to go to work. So I'm kind of leaning toward this um, version. I've done a bunch of testing and I'm a roller bearing guy, but now I'm maybe not. I don't know. Let's take a look at all this as we start the next project. Oh boy, we got a lot of pieces to do. We are assembling side rails and stretchers. That's what I'm calling them. I don't know what other people call them. We are doing bearing caddies, which is this part here. This is the caddy that connects to your router base. This one has bearings on it, skateboard bearings, and it will roll back and forth across these side arcs. So that's cool. So this base is dedicated to whole pattern everything for the Makita. And for everybody that doesn't have this exact router, uh, I was like, what am I going to do? I don't know. Well, I don't know. I do know. I've developed a do-it-yourself base, DIY base, and this is called a glide. It's not a bearing base. It is um, a glide base for lack of better marketing. This will sit in the uh, side arc and slide back and forth. Pretty ingenious. That was an accident. It uh, took a lot of design ideas to get to this. This works pretty well though. Crosshair alignment points and a crosshair with a bullseye in the middle. What you will do is take your palm router, put a quarter inch or six millimeter bit in your palm router, slide it through that hole. Now your router will go in with the base on it. Shoop. So it'll be centered perfectly. Hopefully you'll be able to access some of the mounting points from the top or mark the base, remove your router, drill holes, use appropriate length screws and a washer on the bottom to mount your router to this base. So let's take a quick look at this do-it-yourself base as we continue the next project. After marking the original holes using the router base itself, I had to use the pad for the router base to find and locate the other holes, uh, drilling those out and then upsizing to a final dimension hole. With all the holes drilled, I'm doing a little bit of cleanup with a single edge razor blade, getting it ready for the mounting screws. Uh, this is pretty easy. This stuff trims away nice. And here I'm using the original screws, which you can see are just a little bit too short, really. So I suggest getting some appropriate screws that are the right length and also using a flat washer on the bottom of the base. That'll help uh, distribute the pressure when you're screwing it all together. Congratulations, your router is perfectly centered. Now you can go in with some snips and trim away the crosshair centering filament and you are ready to reinstall your router. Woohoo, yeah, a DIY router base maniac. Look at that, oh, that's beautiful, love it. Let's make some sawdust. Oh, look at this, oh, oh baby, woo. We 
We're going to take a quick look at what it takes to assemble a bearing base. This is a Makita base um, at this point, but there will be other bases available as I get the specs that I need to design the others. Uh, pretty simple though, it takes a nut that fits into the printed filament base, uh, a bolt, a skateboard bearing, and a washer that works as kind of a standoff. It only takes a minute or two to put the whole thing together once you have it printed. Uh, pretty easy process. The Universal Base Glide Caddy version 1 will fit a Bosch GKF125, a Bosch Colt PR20, Makita 700 and 701, a DeWalt 611, a Porter Cable 750, and a Porter Cable 731. There is an informational link in the description which will take you to a PDF. There is a page in the PDF you can print out and uh, test fit your particular compact router to that to see if it will fit other models as well. Taking a quick look at installing heat set brass inserts into our printed side stretchers. I purchased these inserts from Amazon. Uh, I'll have a link to all that stuff in the description. Um, using a soldering iron and basically the inserts do go in in a specified direction. You'll be able to figure that out as you look at it. But uh, plug your soldering iron in, put it on there. It takes a few moments to heat up the brass insert and then it will start melting right down in. And when you're done um, setting the inserts, use a straight edge razor blade, which I'm not showing here, and trim away any uh, melted you know, swelling around the area. You want to be you want to make sure that the uh, side arcs will bolt up nice and tight to these stretchers. And there you go. That's about all the magic there is right there. Uh, grabbing one of the bolts to make sure it'll thread in, and it goes in really nice. These inserts are actually pretty good quality. Gotta like it. There you go. There's the magic. Woohoo! And yet a few more pieces of the puzzle. I'm offering two different size side stretchers uh, and these will be determined or will determine what width rail you have or use to slide this whole contraption along. I'm giving you a four inch wide option and a five inch wide option. So depending on what width rail you have, you'll want to print the appropriate side stretchers or vice versa. Assembly is really quick. Uh, the stretchers do have uh, heat set inserts. Uh, again, information will be in a link in the description. I'm using metric fasteners for this. So, you know, if you don't like metric, you can change things. It's screwing it all together takes like a minute to put this piece together and also take it apart for storage. I typically don't leave this assembled. Once I use it, I break it down, I put it in a box, and I slide it into my cabinet to hold it for another day. When you leave these things all assembled, it takes up space, and it gets dirty, and it gets damaged, and everything else. And here we're taking a look at the two different setups with the narrow and the wider rail stretcher setup. So you got some options. Let's take a quick look at how this whole design works and all of the options that are kind of built into it to fit your needs. We have different radius options. We also have it set up for different base rail widths. We have a five inch width and also a four inch rail width. And really the only thing that changes there are the, what I call the side stretchers, the pieces that hold the two side arches apart. How the arches work is there is a top arch radius, which is the cut radius plus one inch. So if you need a 400 millimeter cut radius on your fingerboard, the top arch that the rollers ride on are 400 millimeters plus one inch. All of the designs are built with that one inch difference between where it cuts 
and where the rollers or the caddy rides. Same goes if it's a seven and a quarter or nine and a half or 10 or 12 or 14 or 16 or 20, uh, 350 millimeter, 400 millimeter, 430 millimeter, all of them. They're all, they all work in the same principle. As we can see in this illustration, the caddy that the router rides on in this instance has bearings that ride on top of the arch radius, which in this case is seven and a quarter inches. The bit that you're using to cut is set to a depth of one inch lower than the arch radius, so it actually cuts at the seven and a quarter inch radius, not at the arch radius, which is actually eight and a quarter, but we're not going to confuse ourselves with that. If it says seven and a quarter on the side and you set your bit to the right depth, you will get a seven and a quarter inch radius cut. Now, something to note, if you set your router bit too deep, you're actually creating a tighter radius. If you set your bit too high, you're creating a greater, a larger radius. When I cut my fingerboards with this, I usually start a little fat. So my bit is a little bit high, not set to the final depth. I take off a little bit of material and then I readjust. I get a little closer. And when I'm done, I am still a little larger than my target radius. The same trying to cut a seven and a quarter. I leave it just a little fat. I end up cleaning everything up with a sanding radius block and pair everything from there. Use radius gauges to verify where you're at and you'll be in good shape. Let's take a look at whatever we're doing next. It is time for the fun to begin, and we are going to give this a test run. Actually, this is not the first time I've used this. Uh, this is just another test run for me. But we're doing a 34-inch scale base neck out of maple uh, using the 16-inch radius arcs. Um, and here I'm using a folded over piece of uh, laser paper to set my initial depth of the bit, and that's just so I don't cut too deep. Do my first passes uh, with the bit, you know, just a hair above the board actually in the center. So I'm taking away the outer edges as the arc rolls across the fingerboard. It's going pretty good. I'm taking uh, narrow passes, maybe an eighth of an inch wide as I work toward the edge of the board. Uh, I work with the length of the board also. I know some people go across, back and forth across in the direction of the frets. Experiment, do what works for you. Personally, I like running the length. You do need to pay attention to the direction of the router bit cut because you can get tear out along the edges of the neck. You'll learn that as you experiment and practice. First round took me four minutes to get my first cut and this is just a little bit fat, just a little over the 16 inch radius. Now I reset the depth of the bit down to my final cut and hit it all again. I'm probably only taking off 10 thousandths of an inch total at this point. So it's a really shallow cut. It goes really fast. It gives me a pretty clean cut and it will be ready for sanding. And I do have the radius sanding blocks that go with all of these side arcs available also. So you can look that up. And there you go. That's about it. Took like six and a half minutes to radius uh, this uh, 34 inch scale base fingerboard blank. There are going to be two options to build the router bases. There's one with bearings and the other will be the glide style where there's no bearings. If you're building the part with the, the glide, you only need uh, the heat insert uh, pieces for the stretchers and some bolts to hold it together. So here we're going to take a quick look at setting up to print the universal uh, glide base, number one. I'm experimenting here with a bunch of different wall thicknesses, top and bottom layer thicknesses, and also sparse infill. So I suggest you think about that depending on what filament you're going to use and your experience with printing things. Take the time to make educated decisions. Don't necessarily replicate what I'm doing. Think it through. I'm giving you the files. You have to make it uh, print properly for your needs. Uh, one thing I will say, this universal base, since it has so many holes in it, the more wall layer thicknesses you give it, 
will slow down print time. It also takes a little bit more uh, filament, but so I'm guessing maybe a four wall thickness, top and bottom layer thickness, and then a sparse infill of 20 or 25. You'll figure it out. Good luck to you. Uh, here we're taking a quick look at, this is an old version of the side arcs. Uh, this is like version two or three or seven. I don't know, way back. They basically are the same now, just a little bit different uh, shapes in some areas, but pretty much do exactly the same tricks. Getting this set up also, again, playing with wall thicknesses and sparse infill and getting it ready to send to the printer. And you'll be able to tell how much filament you're using, how much it's going to cost you to print the parts. And overall, you could print a couple sides, stretchers, the base, everything for like $10, probably, maybe less. Hmm. Well, 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 I think we're getting close to the end. We have taken a look at how this apparatus is made and assembled and built and fine tuned to fit your rails that you mount your fingerboard or your neck to, to re-radius a fingerboard. It screws together really quick and easy. We've taken a look at how to put the uh, heat set inserts into the stretcher pieces. Uh, what else? We've taken a look at the dedicated base for like a Makita or others to follow, and also the do-it-yourself glide caddy base thing. Now we've uh, given it a once over on a 34 inch base scale. Uh, I used a spiral cut mortise bit for this, so it's a half inch wide cut path. And the bit itself uh, probably has about a quarter inch height cut is all. I typically use a flat bottom, one inch wide, uh, what do they call it, a waste board, flattening bit. Pretty much any bit will work. If you want to take really narrow passes anyway, you could get, get away with like a quarter inch bit. Pay very close attention to direction of cut as you're going. You'll find that the bit will do a better job cutting in one direction than if you push it the other. Learn about router bits and which way to cut and which way to go with the grain, especially when you get close to the edges. Uh, if you're going traveling in the wrong direction, you'll be more likely to tear out uh, the rails that I use are set up to accept like a fender style neck that is basically one inch thick total. That's from the bottom of the heel to the top of the fingerboard without the frets. I use two three quarter inch thick pieces of MDF for my rails. I have a bottom rail and a top rail. Top rail is removable. If you take it off, you can put a fender style neck in there. If you use the top rail, then you can put a piece of... Um, fingerboard material on top of that to get your total one inch height. This contraption will currently accept something um, five sixteenths. I don't know. I'd have to check it again. Thanks for sticking with me through all of this. I hope you find these files informational. If you have uh, other palm size or laminate style routers that you use um, and you'd like a base that's dedicated to that, I know there are a number of them that are very common routers. If you have a good base dimension of that, I need the diameter of the base, whether it's round or square. And I also need exact placement of the holes in relation to center of that. And I can try to put something together. Now, the warning will be, I can make one. Somebody will have to print it out and try it and make sure it fits. I don't have every router. Can't afford it. Work with me. We'll get there. Thank you very much again for watching uh, and sticking with me. Give it a thumbs up to let YouTube know you like this kind of stuff. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Greatly appreciate that. Leave comments. Love hearing from everybody all around the world. No matter what you got going on, let me know. It's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Like, thumb, subscribe. Share this content wherever you can. If you're on forums, please share it there. We'll grow the family that way too. Uh, until next time, take care of yourself and those around you. Bye.